Berserk is an intense series, to say the least. And arguably, no one has gone through as much pain and suffering as its protagonist, Guts. Even his name has a macabre origin that would be the entire source of pain for characters in a less merciless series. But for all the monsters and humans he's overcome, maybe the most inspiring thing about Guts is all the ways he's been taken from, and everything he's lost, and how he's come back from it. Whether it's having to kill his adoptive father in self-defense, knowing that the same father sold him into an abusive situation, starting all over with a new mercenary group, feeling betrayed as a friend, realizing he was the catalyst behind his friend, losing hope, losing an eye and a limb, and all of his extended family, and more. Guts has had to start over so many times that his nickname of The Struggler could not be more fitting. So how does he do it? How does Guts overcome everything, from sexual abuse to being maimed fighting demons, losing his best friend and love of his life, and more? Well, he doesn't do it by going to a priest or a therapist, and the Black Swordsman doesn't have the luxury of lessening his pain with psychiatric medication. Here's how he pulls it off, and how you can do the same. The key behind everything is that it is a process. Guts never just encounters a situation without it being informed by his past experiences. He is uncomfortable with physical contact after being abused. He does have trust issues upon joining the Band of the Hawk. And he doesn't want to make new friends after suffering through the deaths of his original ones during the Eclipse. But the important aspect of these and other struggles that he works through is that time passes. He doesn't define himself as being unable to change because of those experiences. And while it does take a while and proof that it's worth reconsidering these areas, he doesn't stay permanently bound to his traumas by making gods out of them. By simply experiencing these struggles as struggles and doubts rather than medicalizing them as most do, he views them as problems, as things he has no reason to change his view on until he does. For example, Guts is raised in a mercenary band where he's regularly abused and neglected by his father figure and ultimately is sold out by that father figure to sexual abuse. And even once he gets a certain form of closure by killing his attacker, the boy is still conflicted over how he feels towards his father figure, who ends up forcing him to defend himself with deadly force. From there, the men he's come to associate with his comrades think he murdered his father figure in cold blood and chase him off. How does he heal this wound? largely by just re-experiencing those kinds of situations, but with different outcomes, by getting to live through circumstances that show him that isn't all there is to life. On his first mission, he's given the most dangerous position as they flee during a raid. But it also shows to him that they trust him, and when he refuses to just bail and is going to be overwhelmed, Griffith arranges to have him back it up and saved. Even the way he's brought into the group after Griffith wins their duel is with a very intimate and gentle attitude, which contrasts with his father figure's approach. He has to be physically close to his future love interest, Casca, on numerous occasions, and learns what it means to be the most important person to an incredibly ambitious leader, all while playing an incredibly valuable role in his group for which he actually receives proper credit. And this is the basis of how he works through all his other issues, even if the specifics change. The thing about human minds, in fiction or reality, is that they aren't injured the same way our physical bodies are. If you lose an arm, it remains gone, even if you get a cutting-edge prosthetic. But your relationship with how you adapt to that is what defines how well you can function and how much pain you'll experience related to that situation. So for example, despite losing both an eye and part of an arm, Gut's relationship with fighting doesn't change. He can still fight effectively and actually adapts incredibly well to his new prosthetic and its associated armaments. He even starts using weapons related to his dead friends from the Band of the Hawk, which gives him a sense of closure by honoring them in combat. Someone with a different relationship with that kind of situation could feel worthless 
because they don't have all the pieces of themselves and supposedly couldn't fight as well anymore. And being in battle could make them associate it with their memories of fighting alongside the friends they'd lost. The point here being that the circumstances themselves didn't define Guts's response to them. And even though he reacts exactly as most people would to many circumstances, he also doesn't view himself as fixed in his pain. And so that allows him to move on from something rather than permanently turning away from it out of fear. Commonly, this is referred to as different versions of exposure therapy. And really, it's just about giving the brain a chance to re-experience circumstances and conclude that one result isn't inevitable in all situations. Just because you fall off your bike the first time you try to ride it doesn't mean that you're incapable of riding a bike. But that's the kind of reasoning most of us use when dealing with painful circumstances in our lives. Guts bypasses this by never truly giving up on anything, whether it's being able to trust people as friends, bringing Casca back to normal, or kill a bunch of terrifying demons with crazy powers. This lets him move past the if stage of dealing with his problems and onto the how. So if you have a problem that's been bothering you for however long and it feels impossible to overcome, pretend you could. You don't even need to believe it's possible. Just imagine there was a place where getting over it would be possible and ask how. If it was a relationship, would getting into another one help you get past it? Or maybe not being in a relationship at all? Or do you maybe need other platonic relationships so that you don't put too much weight into romance and that's how you'd find balance? Or say you lost a job or just really don't like the one you have right now. How could you turn not having that job anymore into a positive? into space to move into a more lucrative career, or maybe to spend more time with others you care about. These are just a few examples of situations where things could change and make circumstances better for the person who might have felt like they'd last forever. But regardless of your specifics, to move beyond issues like guts, you need the courage to not view them as eternal problems that you're not just stuck with for the rest of your life. The last component of Guts moving past his issues is remembering he has control within those circumstances, even if he can't make them look exactly how he'd like them to be. So, for example, when he's afraid of making new friends, what the man is really afraid of is losing friends all over again and feeling that same pain. It's only once he's able to fight with them and protect them and experience that they can defend themselves as well that he gets used to the idea of having the friends again. Guts takes action to defend those friends. If he gets separated from them, he searches for them. He puts himself in harm's way for them. He puts himself in a position to be able to do something to have a sense of control over his circumstances so that he doesn't feel powerless. And that doesn't even mean he needs to be taking action. There are times when he simply trusts a plan of theirs to work or a different kind of attack to land as they believe it will. In these cases, he's not the one doing everything, but he's still making the decision to trust, which remains a form of control that he has over his personal situation. So really, the strength of Guts's approach is the same as the strength of the man himself. He never gives up. He lets time pass so that different solutions can occur to him. He continues trusting that he has some form of control over the situation, and then he takes that action rather than letting fear freeze him in time. If you're willing to consider that something could change, rather than believing it's a unique kind of problem that just can't be solved no matter what. And if you trust that you can have a form of control over that situation that enables you to be more than just the spectator of a world acting on you. Then you have the basis that enabled Guts, and all real-life people as well, to overcome their circumstances. Post-traumatic growth is a real thing. Change can be scary, and yes, incredibly painful. But if the change could make that pain come, then it can make that pain go as well. It's just a matter of finding inspiration in characters like Guts and others, 
who've dealt with far more trying circumstances than we have and come out the other side and trusting that we can do that same. And the best part is, you don't need to do it all perfectly to make things work out. Guts makes plenty of mistakes. He has horrific extremes where he tries pretending like it isn't even worth moving on from things. But he still comes around and overcomes things with time. That's how you overcome obstacles like Guts, by fighting on until you win, even if you doubt it to begin with, even if it seems impossible. Because with time comes change. And if you're willing to let things change and are still around when they fade away, nothing can eclipse your path forward.